As, as as the Grinch stares down at the peasants below. Uh, just, a, just a heads up, by the way, if you wait on this tower for like a minute staring at your locket, you actually get an achievement called uh, Melancholy, which is, again, funny. This is, the second, this is the third game in a row where if you just wait on a screen, you can get an achievement for it, which is it's just funny. Uh, anyway, let's... Whoa, there was a shooting star right there. That was really cool. Anyway, let's... Uh, Let's set off. Oh, Jesus. Don't scare me like that. Uh, well, you're trusting a skeleton. Like, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Onward! Okay, and this is the Spectre Knight's hub area, which is actually the Tower of Fate, which is really interesting, because, you know, this is the final level of the game normally, so... Yeah, that's interesting, because, you know, we are working for the Enchantress, so I guess it makes sense. Still, I really thought that it would be the Lichyard that we ended up being our hub world, but nope, it's actually the Tower of Fate, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, so as you can see, there's going to be minions of the Enchantress uh, running all throughout this place. And also, there's a skull down here. There we go. Speaking of red skulls, we're actually going to want to talk to this guy up here. Or, not this guy. Liquid Samurai. Liquid! Anyway, so if we talk to this red skull guy up here, you never would have guessed who was going to get the red skulls in this game. It is revealed to actually be Red. And Red's a cool cat. Okay. Uh, sure. So basically the gimmick of the uh, the collectible of this game, which is the Red Skulls, it was the Cypher Coins and Play of Shadows, but the Red Skulls will actually net you your relics in this game. And relics, I'd actually argue, in Spectre Knight don't play as big of a role as they did in Play of Shadows or Shovel Knight. I'd say the... the relics are the least useful in the Spectre Knight campaign. They're still very useful, and, like, we're gonna be showing them all off, don't worry. And we're going to be collecting all 100 Red Skulls, don't worry. We will get, we will get every single last one of them, uh, which basically just amounts to exploring the levels every nook and cranny and not missing some, and don't worry, there are some dickishly hidden ones that I will point out. But basically, using uh, Red Skulls, we can actually purchase these curios from Red, and, uh, first off, let's buy the Dread Talon, sure. Uh, uh, okay, show the way. Oh, really? <laughs> I think you're just bullshitting me. Anyway, one of the coolest things about the relics in this game is that the game actually gives you a little mini gauntlet to actually test out the uh, relics you find, or curios in this game. Uh, so basically, in these challenges, your scythe does not work at all. Like, Shovel Knight, or Spectre Knight, will not be able to actually attack using his scythe. So what you can do instead is just use these curios. So the Dread Talon is basically this one-hit melee attack that does tons of damage. It's, it's, I think, the most powerful attack in the whole game. And you get it really early, so that's really cool. You can just plow through armored enemies, no problem. And you can use it in midair too, which is really convenient. Also, these uh, lanterns with these glowing uh, darkness balls actually refill your darkness meter. So if we use our Dread Talon, Dread Claw, Dread Talon? Which one is it? Let me see. Uh, that's weird. I can't go to my menu to find out. Oh, well. <laughs> Just, like, flip out of there. No, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> I love how Red just nonchalantly just like, eh, fuck that! Like, don't need these anymore. Because he is looking for one specific Red Skull, specifically his wife, so that's funny. Anyway, let's buy a uh, 
I'd argue, the most useful curio in the game, and uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Ow. Okay, so the uh, Will Skull is about as simple as it gets. Basically, all you have to do is just use the Relic, and you will simply use Darkness to regain Will. In fact, you'll use about about a bar of darkness, and you'll gain two health back. And as you can see in this challenge, this is just a dick move where it's like, you're definitely going to get hit, so... And you have half a heart, so it, basically the game is like forcing you to use the will skull for this challenge, which I think is pretty clever. But anyway, this is the most useful Kirio in the whole game. I Just having the ability to heal whenever you want, similar to Plague Knight, actually... Um, but having the ability to heal whenever you want is very useful, especially since the other relics aren't even that good. Um, they're good, but they're just not as useful as they are in the other campaigns. Anyway, let's actually continue on looking through, uh, looking through the Tower of Fate. A cloak, interesting. Uh, sure, 800 gold, why not? Uh, sure. Let's actually, uh, keep pouring, pouring in gold. Uh, it's gonna lead somewhere, so let's just donate one last time. What's going on? Oh, God. <laughs> we are Manny. That's a stretch. Oh, okay. So basically, I don't know why you have to pay this guy 2400 gold to access this, but whatever. Basically, this guy will sell you all the cloaks of the game. And, uh, again, I gotta say, I, I felt the same way about Plague of Shadows, but I think the cloaks in this game leave a bit to be desired. So, let's just go through one, each of them one by one. So, the Cloak of Clemency is, uh, I'd argue the best cloak that you can get in the game. So, let's actually just get it right now. Because first off, you get straight up Skeletor color palette, which is hilarious. But also, if you look at what the cloak does, uh, if you fall into a pit, it'll actually take away like five health or something. It'll, it'll take away a lot of your health. You'll probably be like at one health, but you'll like be pulled back up and you'll reappear on a safe platform. So basically, it gives you a safety net. When combined with the ability to heal whenever you want, this cloak is the best cloak in the game. It's the super safety net cloak. It's a direct upgrade from your normal cloak. Like, I'd, I'd argue there's no reason to use this cloak when you can just use this one. Besides the cool color palette, because the Spectre Knight cloak is pretty cool. Um, also, as an added bonus, just like the blue cloak from Plague of Shadows, you'll drop half as much gold when you actually die, which makes 100%ing the game a lot easier for buying all the upgrades and everything. And uh, it's funny because I I guess it's the lame cloak to get. I got the lame cloak from Spectre, or from Plague of Shadows as well, the one that makes you drop less gold and you become a treasure magnet or something. I, I can't remember. I haven't played Plague of Shadows since I let's played it. But um, yeah, I just, I think this is the best cloak in the game. For this, however, is the best named cloak, the Rail Mail, which just sounds amazing. Um, but this is the advanced cloak, just like Plague of Shadows. Again, this has a lot of ties to Plague of Shadows, as you can imagine, because they're both DLC campaigns made after the game came out. But this is the advanced cloak of the campaign, whereas Plague of Shadows, the advanced cloak was bouncing off of every surface when you burst. The gimmick of the rail mail is that you can grind along any surface, including spikes, as if they were rails which I'll get into rail grinding a little bit later, but this cloak is a little bit tricky to handle, but if you do manage to get a hold of it, um, and a real hang on it, I think, like, you'd be, you'd, I think it probably is the most rewarding, especially since the actual color palette is you look like death, which is really cool. I will be showing off each of these cloaks eventually when I have enough gold, because there's plenty of gold to get in this game, so I, it should be fine. I should be able to show off all of them. The Striker Shawl will actually give you the ability to charge attack, which honestly is usually good, but I don't know. For Spectre Knight, it just, I found it really clunky and not very worth it, especially for 6,000 gold. I like, I think this is definitely a lot 
this is cheaper and it's more effective than just the charge attack because I don't think it's a very good charge attack. Shovel Knights is way better than this. Um, here's the ra raiment of risk. I'm actually not sure what a raiment is, but this is actually a really cool cloak. Basically, what happens is if you break a checkpoint, you'll actually gain immense attack increase as well as like range on your attack. It's basically your your scythe is one big like fire attack that like murders everything, but you have to break checkpoints to actually activate it. And that's just really risky, so that's why it's called the Ryman of Risk. Especially if you die, then there's no way to reactivate it until you get to the next checkpoint, because you just broke the last checkpoint to activate it. So, yeah, it's fun to play around with, but really risky, as you might imagine. And, as usual in Shovel Knight, this is the cosmetic-only um, cloak that you can get. Specifically, the ghostly carb, which makes you look more fearsome than before. And it definitely does, but again, it's cosmetic only. So if you actually want an, an advantage from using a cloak, definitely don't use this one or the gold armor, because you won't actually get an advantage. So with that, let's actually leave and talk to some more uh, NPCs. Missy. No, I see. Hmm, fair enough. <laughs> Specty. Oh. No oh, thanks. So basically, Missy will serve as kind of another safety net for you. If you miss a chest for Will or Darkness in any of the levels and you don't feel like backtracking, Missy will actually offer you the chest for a price if you're too lazy to actually backtrack to the level. Um, or just straight up can't find it. She'll actually give you the chest for a price. So that's something I never actually used Missy once in the campaign because when I missed a chest, I just backtrack for it because why waste the gold, you know? Anyway, this is the uh, kind of like the dining hall area of the Tower of Fate, apparently. So let's uh, talk to some more customers. Not customers, uh, pa patrons. Sure, we'll go with that. Here's another new mechanic that they've actually added in this game, the Amiibo Fairy, which is uh, a little strange. So basically what you can do is you can scan a Shovel Knight Amiibo for even more benefits for having a Shovel Knight Amiibo. Basically, you can actually scan it and it'll act as a little, like, kind of like turret buddy for you that just floats behind you and uh, attacks enemies for you. So if you really need that, I guess. I'm assuming you can level it up. I actually haven't tried it, but... I don't really think it's really necessary, but hey, it's another thing, so I can't complain. Oh, thanks. I don't know why you had to give me that, but whatever, I'm not going to complain. Anyway, so this is the uh, little uh, training course of the, uh, or the fun course of the, uh, of the tower and essentially the edge farmer edgiest NPC in the whole game holy shit anyway this is where you get to actually practice rail grinding in this game and rail grinding is about as fun as it looks which is to say immensely because you can even do tricks when you jump it's actually ridiculous that Spectre Knight is this is this cool the ultimate edge lord so, uh, skating on his scythe. Ridiculous. Anyway, here's actually a hidden room of the tower. Uh, this one is... <sighs> I'll do it just to show you, show you it, but holy crap. I don't really understand this. This is essentially the uh, mini-game of Spectre of Torment, because every, every one of these has to have some sort of mini-game. Although I don't remember one for Plague of Shadows. I can't remember if there was a mini-game. Basically, the mini-game in this is basically an insanely hard platforming gauntlet. So, the gimmick of fighting Hector, or doing Hector's uh, challenge, is death. Uh, yeah, I'll give it another try, you jerk.
Okay, so the gimmick of Horus, not Hector's, sorry, challenge is that he'll basically send you up on this little elevator and now your goal is to climb the entire Tower of Fate, except he he's chasing you on this this platform that will kill you as soon as it hits you. So basically, it's a race to the finish, although, like, you'll get to the finish first before he will, because, again, if he catches up, he'll kill you instantly. So the hardest part about this, though, is that this level that I'm doing right now is being randomly generated on the fucking fly. God damn it. So yes, as I said, now I'm at the bottom of the uh, temple, or bottom of the tower again, and as you can see, this is a completely different area than the one I just did. So basically, it's this insanely difficult platforming gauntlet that is also randomly generated. It's not completely randomly generated, I mean like, there's set rooms, like all the rooms are set, but the, what rooms will you'll actually get is completely random. You can have the same room multiple times too in one attempt. So, if you get, like, a really bad, like, string of luck, then you might be screwed. As you can see, this he rubber bands like an asshole, too. So, you basically have to keep moving and for nothing. You can't stop for nothing. And I just, I was blown away when I discovered this. Because this is, hands down, the hardest, like, thing in the whole series. Okay, as I was saying, this is hands down the absolute hardest single thing besides challenge the challenges on the main menu. Besides that, this is hands down the hardest thing in any of the games. In Play of Shadows, in Shovel Knight, it like whatever have you, this is hands down the absolute hardest thing because you have to adapt to everything on the fly essentially. This challenge is a little bit of a dick. And these books are a little annoying. And I was just blown away that this is something that you can access at the very beginning of the game. And spoiler alert, the reward isn't even worth the effort. It's just a little bit of gold. Which I guess you could farm infinitely if you wanted. This is not worth it though because this is a complete hassle and your heart's going to be beating so fast by the end of this. It's crazy. And Again, if you get to, it doesn't matter how far you get, if you die, it's back to the very frickin' bottom, and it's random, so if you if you want to practice a specific section, too frickin' bad, because it's random, so you just have to keep going and pray that your uh, platforming skills are up to snuff, which, let's see if mine are. As you can see, these dash slashes are actually nuts, and now is the part where I can't even talk because now I have to actually concentrate. Don't die. Oh god. I'm dead. See, I got stuck underneath that platform. I was at the very top of the tower pretty much, and now it's all the way back to the bottom for not even, like, a small little bit of change, but god damn it, I promised I'd do it, so let's just try again. Okay, I'm almost where I actually died, and there's no point of grabbing darkness or anything. That's the worst part, too, is you'd think that, like, oh my god, I did not mean to actually hit that one. Holy crap, that was close. That's one of the annoying things, too, is you'd think coming back here later with relics might make it a little bit easier. It doesn't. The relics don't help you at all, because... At the end of the day, it's all about wall clinging and dash slashing, both of which are techniques that you have at the very beginning of the game. So you need to just fucking hone your skills and not die. Okay, I'm near the top of the tower again. Every time you fail, like like next to the top of the tower, you're looking at like a two, three minute just waste of time, basically. And I cannot believe I'd lived through that. What the hell? Also, I've, I've attempted this like five times now, or five times or so, and I'm still seeing new rooms, so I'm gonna die again. This is the room I died on last time, isn't it? No. It wouldn't be as big of a deal if he was so fast, but he just keeps coming. Like, you can't slow down for even a fraction of a second or you lose. No! This is ridiculous! Look at this crazy platforming you have to do! Oh my god, we did it! Like, this it's insane what you actually have to do to beat this guy! 
again, just having this available from s moment one, it just is so strange. It's not, it's just not even remotely worth doing. You, I don't even, I don't even believe you get an achievement for it if you're going for all feats or anything. All you get is like, not even 2,000 gold. Why would you ever want to do this? There's so much gold in this game that isn't from this BS mini game. So, I don't know, just not, not a fan of that. Just, it's very frustrating and I don't know. It, 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 if you want like a crazy challenge, then that, that there you go. But it's not like there's a good reward for it. And there's a little hidden passage right here. You know, we're back to the very start. Man, just doing that platform just makes me want to die. Um, I said, makes me want to die. <laughs> Watch your footing on the tower. Well, at least the funny dialogue is always there to cheer me back up. 